All right, guys, well, I'm back today with a very interesting scope and red dot combo setup. I've been seeing these for probably about four or five years, but I've yet to try putting a red dot on top of a low power variable optic like this Burris. Now Burris actually offers this as a complete set with the LPV optic, the red dot mounted to the top, and the mount all put together from the factory. They also include some extras if you decide you want to take the red dot off later. They provide extra scope caps and extra mounts, and then you can add that red dot to a pistol if you choose so in the future. Something like this should be pretty slick, or it could be a complete gimmick. I had no idea because I've never tried something like this, shifting my point of view from an optic to a red dot and back and forth. So Optics Planet was nice enough to send this entire package out to the channel for us to try out to see if it's actually worth it or if you should just stick with a red dot, LPV, or some type of prism optic. I've been shooting this down at the range and the results might surprise you guys because I absolutely fell in love. And this, in my opinion, is not a gimmick for certain aspects. Is this for everybody? I'm not quite sure, but I do see a place in people's arsenal for this type of optic setup. If you like this optic setup at the end of the video, remember to use that coupon code 704 Tactical for 5% off of any Optics Planet order. And if you just like one part of this optic setup, you can either get the mount, the scope, or the red dot independently. And again, that coupon code 704 Tactical is still valid off of anything you get on there. Let's dig into some details about this entire setup and see if it's right for you. So I'm going to break this review down into individual components as well as an overall feel for the entire package. And the first thing I want to talk about is the mount itself. This is their pepper mount designed to shift the optic forward for the more proper eye relief that you would require for an AR-15. It also brings it at a nice AR-15 height. Again, it gives you different multiple cap options that you can mount either the Picatinny right here for a Picatinny mount optic. This cap actually has the built-in Burris fast fire mount, so you can just drop that on right there. Or if you decide you don't want anything on there, you can use this standard scope cap. So a very nice mount and scope setup, which is actually available on their website for anywhere from $75 to $100 for just the mount. And I believe it is a high value mount. It hasn't walked loose, hasn't come off, and I really like the way it's set up and it gives you the proper eye relief. The heart of this entire optic setup is the Burris RT6, which is an LPV or a low power variable optic. And this guy is actually very nice independently of this entire setup. This is my first time really investigating Burris red dots and scopes. I'm actually very impressed. This is a one to six power optic with very clear glass. And generally this optic, I believe runs about $400, but I think it's on sale for about $300 independently on Optic Planet's website. So you're looking at right now about 370-ish, maybe 380 to 400-ish if you were to buy these independently and attach them together minus the red dot. Now the cool thing about this Burris, let's show you guys real quick, is it actually has a throw lever built in. And something like this is incredibly nice, especially on an LPV, because a lot of times guys are using this for three gun and they want to transition from close up to far away quickly. That LPV throw lever is very nice because it allows you to do that with ease. It's got a perfect spot for your thumb to throw this from the one power to the six power. Also, you can adjust at the one power setting in the back, the ocular relief, and that allows you to kind of focus it in for those up close shots because this is similar to a red dot in a sense. It's got the one magnification, but you're still looking through a lens system. So I always kind of rate a lot of these optics, the LPVs on how good they do at the one as well as the six. And this one is definitely good at the one. And that kind of brings me up to the reticle. I'm gonna show you guys here to give you a nice instruction manual. The reticle on this is set up perfectly for long distance shots and CQB. It has a CQB ring with all the information you'll guys need and a BDC reticle set up for the 223556. If you want, you can actually pause that and get all the information you need. And I'll just talk quickly about how well it works. The illuminated part is actually fairly bright on a bright sunny day. I mean, it was super bright as I was shooting this and I could easily make out that red, especially for those CQB shots at about 10 to 15 to 20 yards. So it actually works as a red dot and I'm very impressed. Now this stays the same size at all of the ranges. So you can only use this to range effectively at the six power setting, something to consider when you're using the BDC reticle. 
The glass is super clear, and I've already mentioned that, whether you're shooting at 100, 2, or 300 yards, because this drops all the way down to 600 yard compensation, I believe you can adequately use that scope at those distances. Although today, I only really stretch it out to 100, and I look down at about 3 or 400, and it seemed very clear. So the LPV part of this entire optics setup is very slick and I could definitely recommend it independently of everything else in this entire optics setup. I love the fact that it's got the built-in throw lever. You don't have to buy that separately. The glass is very clear, on par, or even better than some of the other ones in the same price category. But what this has going for it is the fact that that center illumination actually gets bright enough to use it as a red dot. I found it was super easy to acquire your targets quickly even though i had a red dot sometimes i tried to acquire my targets quickly with this on the one power setting so i could give you guys an accurate feel and this thing is awesome and then i definitely stretched it out it was actually in the 100 yards and the shooting tower at the six power setting i mean plinking steel no problem whatsoever this is an awesome optic those little four inch plates at 100 yards were no problem at the six power setting Moving along to the Burris Fastfire 3 is actually fairly slick. You actuate it and turn it on between the brightness settings by clicking this button and you click through to turn it off. It's got an auto adjust setting because it picks up light in the front and it's got a manual setting to transition between the different brightness settings. I'm not quite sure the durability because again it's been sitting on top of here and not on a pistol slide so I'm not reviewing this as a pistol optic just an optic that sits on top of this and it does pretty good. It's actually fairly easy to pick up and so far it's doing really nice. The dot does not wash out on a bright sunny day which is good and it does get pretty dim if you wanted to use it at a nighttime setting. It works really well in all types of conditions and the glass seems fairly clear. So no complaints, it didn't walk loose and it held zero. It's very slick sitting on top of here. But let's talk about that and let's talk about how this all interfaces together. So I actually spent a lot of time transitioning from the red dot to the optic. Whether it be at the range or just kind of pilling around in the yard and at the house, I wanted to get a feel for this. And I wanted to see if it was, I don't know, gimmicky, if it was just a novelty. Would you actually use a red dot on top of a scope, especially a scope that already goes down to the one power setting with a bright illumination? And I can see this in very niche situations that a lot of people may actually encounter. And that's when you're mainly shooting at distance, but you may encounter something up close. If you're going to be generally taking 100 yard shots and out, you probably have your settings set to 3 to 6. But what happens if you encounter a threat or you're in a 3 gun match and you have to hit targets up close within about 10 yards? That's going to be really difficult at the 6 power setting. That's when you just slightly pick up your head, engage your targets, then lower your head back down, and then take your distance shots. I tried this in and around the car at Holly Springs Tactical Gun Range, and that's why I love that gun range. They've got a bunch of barriers for me to try this out. So quickly, over the top of the car, I was using the red dot. Then I'd instantly lower my cheeks slightly and take shots at 50 to 75 yards using the six power scope, knocking again those four inch steel plates. So that is where it really comes in handy. When you need to make shots close up for personal defense or competition, but then you need to instantly make shots at a distance, this setup actually works well. If you were going to primarily take shots just up close or just far away, there's really no need to use the red dot. Put this on the one power setting and it works well up close and you have all of that information in the reticle system for bullet drop compensation if you wanted to just set this at the six power setting and forget it. So I do believe this optic setup does have a place, especially in three gun life or if you want to do all rifle that you can use for CQB shots as well as distance shots with those instantaneous transitions without lifting your head completely off, flipping the throw lever and putting it back down. It's much easier and much quicker to just transition from plane to plane to make hits with your red dot and then at a distance with your LPV at the six power setting. This whole setup does require some getting used to and after a few range trips it was actually fairly easy to transition from plane to plane and if you thought about it before you brought the rifle up, even under stressful conditions with a timer, I could easily acquire the dot or the optic depending on which one my mind was focused on going to. 
Once you figure out your cheek welds and things like that, it's actually really easy to transition from the red dot to the scope. I'm not sure if it's for everybody, but I can absolutely tell you it is not a gimmick and it definitely has a place in my personal arsenal for any competitive shooting or just for a go-to rifle like this Adam's Arms. I feel like I can adequately use this to defend my life from seven all the way up to 600 yards effectively and quickly with this entire optics setup at an affordable price. This optic sells for about 230. Uh, this one sells for about uh, 300. So you're at about 530 there. And then this mount sells for anywhere around 70 to 100 dollars. And I think if you buy this entire package, you're right at about 550 or 560. So it saves you about 80 dollars if you buy this as a set. And I think it's worth it. I mean, a lot of times you can buy a high quality red dot or a high quality scope for well over that price. So having a lot of options for that price range is a very high value and it's worth it in my opinion. Hope you guys like this video and another shout out to Optics Planet for sending it over. Remember to use that coupon code 704 Tactical if you like any of these or the entire setup. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.